What was it that Uncle Ben said again? Oh yeah, right. Fill your cup of rice with three quarters water and then put in the microwave. No, not that. With great power comes great responsibility. That is what Uncle Ben said, right. But when it comes to the Vancouver Canucks, I think it's finally time to go out there and talk about the guy who has arguably been failing the most in that respect. He has a lot of power, he has a lot of responsibility, but he has not really been fulfilling it much. Let's talk about Elias Pettersson, because earlier this morning we had ourselves the what do they call this, an off-day press conference where Elias Pettersson spoke to the media following last night's game against the Oilers, and this is a bizarre video. Like, actually, no, it wasn't from this morning. It was from an hour ago. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and listen to it. It's six minutes long, and it's just questions and answers with Elias Pettersson. And the weird thing about this was that you know, people like to talk about body language, right? Like, oh, JT Miller has body language. Oh, he doesn't look like he wants to answer questions or on the ice. He's demotivated. He's slamming the back of the net. He's like yelling at his guys. Like, people talk about body language all the time. But Elias Pettersson and his body language, I feel like it's going under the radar a little bit. Because even before this video, this press conference of him that came out, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but even before that, there were the moments in the games where Elias Pettersson would go to his knees after missing a shot, or he just kind of gets into the battle, he gets shoved around a little bit, he falls down, and he takes a little bit of time to get up, he looks skywards way too many times because he's not hitting the net and all that. It's body language, body language, body language. And in this interview, the guy's body language, like, I think somebody said it in the subreddit, the guy's like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. Guy looks sad. Guy looks completely out of it. And, like, he says the right things. I don't want to discredit Petey for stepping up to the media, whether it's him or the team or Rick Tockett that puts themselves in a spot where it's like, yeah, Petey, you want to go up? And he's like, yes, I need to do this. I need to be the guy to address the media on a day off, or not a day off, I mean, no days off in the playoffs, right? But in an off day, where you're not playing a hockey game, it's gotta be Petey. And for some reason, you know, the guy's body language has me completely concerned. He drags on some of the words, I mean, he says he's a little bit nasally still because of some sort of, I don't know, they didn't say it was like, oh, he's sick, but it's kind of like there's a thing going around, you know, even I still got it a bit, but just the way he's answering these questions too, the guy sounds really sad. And some of these answers, he does take a lot of accountability, but he doesn't really dive too deep into what things he can change in order to fix whatever is going on with him in his game. There's a lot of, I want to be a difference maker, maybe it's the players that I'm playing with, but at the end of the day, like, I'm in control of what I have, and it was hard getting to sleep last night, and... With all of this, you know, you can tell that it's weighing a lot on Elias Pettersson, his inefficiency in the postseason so far. But also, it's like, what do the Canucks have to do to get this guy going? Rick Tockett said in the press conference yesterday, yeah, Petey's gotta get going. I don't know what else there is to say, but Petey's gotta get going. And then we had, like, Bruce Boudreaux talking about this on TV, saying that the guy has completely lost his confidence, Pedersen, that is, not talk it. And then it was John Garrett on Donnie and Dolly yesterday. Pedersen is not confident. Like, this guy is just a completely different player than what we saw at the beginning of the year when he was one of the best players in the league in scoring and in January, where he brought himself back up to that status. There were two really amazing stints where he was producing points and points and goals like crazy and he was moving his feet and he was getting involved and he was scoring a lot. It was those two, the beginning of the season in January. But ever since February, Pedersen has kind of slowed down and it's gotten even worse when the games matter the most. And I have no doubt that Elias Pedersen, the player, will finish the $11 million contract that he is on till the beginning of the 2030s, and we're gonna look at him as one of the legends of this team. Like, he'll be fine. I give it eight years, yeah, he'll probably figure it out in eight years. And he's a good enough player to justify that $11 million price tag over that time span. But right now, in 2024, 
at the beginning of that, the contract hasn't even kicked in yet. Like, he's still making just seven. But this is the guy that has all the expectations on him. He's supposed to be the best player on the team. And he's been like, what? Tenth best? You could say, who's been better than Pedersen this playoff run? Okay, Thatcher Demko, Casey DeSmith, Arthur Silovs, the three goalies, I'd say, have been more impactful and better than Pedersen. So, yeah, Demko even only played one game, so that's kind of damning. But those three will add on Brock Besser, will add on JT, will add on Quinn, will add on Dakota Joshua, Connor Garland, Elias Lindholm for sure, and Nikita Zadorov. That's 10 guys. That's not even talking about the defensive shutdown qualities of guys like Tyler Myers and Carson Soucy. The team has had some passengers the past little while, and, you know, the question has come out as to whether or not Rick Tockett playing Pedersen with guys like Lafferty and Mikheyev is part of the problem. Like, it's been long enough that everybody's saying, oh, should you play Pedersen with Joshua and Garland? Should you play Pedersen with Miller and Besser full-time? Try to get him going again. But that's kind of the thing. Pedersen is the caliber of player where he should be able to be going no matter who it is he plays with. I mean, Sidney Crosby made Chris Kunitz an Olympian. Henrik and Daniel Sedin made Alex Burrows a 30-goal scorer. Good players elevate those around them. And under most circumstances, they still look like good players. Pedersen has been as much of a passenger as Ilya Mikheyev and Lafferty have been. And now, conversations have arisen as to whether or not the Canucks should even start a guy like Jonathan Lekaramaki in the lineup. Put him in. He's already with the team. He's with the Abbotsford Canucks and he got brought up. I mean, him, Elias Pedersen, the other one, a bunch of other dudes are with the team right now. Here's what Fall Charnology went out there and tweeted earlier this afternoon, asked about the possibility of playing someone like Lucara Maki, who has never played an NHL game, in the lineup in Game 5. Tockett says, I'm swinging the bat. I'm not scared. He didn't commit to playing Lucara Maki, but it sounds like a real consideration. He says he wants to get all the intel first. And think about that. Would that not be, like, the craziest thing? Lakaramaki, I've seen a lot of people, like my buddy Sap talks about this a lot, how Lakaramaki is not an option because he's fresh out of Sweden, he just finished up the season over there, he doesn't have any NHL experience, but the point is, he's good. Like, he's good at scoring, he's got offensive instincts, he's got probably the best shot on the team already. Like, aside from Brock Besser in his prime and Pedersen in his prime, like, Lakaramaki is nobody's match when it comes to raw shooting ability. So, would it not be interesting to think about, okay, put Pedersen on the fourth line, play him with Lakaramaki, give them extremely sheltered minutes, your only task is to go out there and score. Pedersen, get it to Lakaramaki, if this guy can get the puck on net, it's in. That's the task. Is that not an idea that you at least think about? Not because it's a no-brainer, but because it's thinking outside of the box. And if the Canucks need goals, like yesterday, they could have used some more goals. They didn't do anything for the first 40 minutes of the game. No goals, no nothing, until Connor Garland and Dakota Joshua ended up getting goals in the third. But it was too little too late as Evan Bouchard was able to come back and win the game at the end. But for the Karamaki, is this an option? He is already one of the most offensively potent guys in the lineup. But do you use him? He is extraordinarily raw. I wouldn't be surprised if Tarkett just said, no, sorry, like you are too inexperienced to play. Nah, we'll just put PDG when he comes back in, that's it. But if they try this, if they try to get PD going by playing him with Lakaramaki, hey, guess what? Lakaramaki couldn't be any worse than Ilya Mikheyev and Niels Hoaglander, right? I don't know, man. We'll see. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Elias Pettersson, what the hell's going on with him, and whether or not Lakaramaki could actually be the guy to step in and maybe fix this. Who really knows? Thoughts in the comment section? I'll leave a link in the description to the Elias Pettersson press conference because it's a very interesting video, too. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.